Duty falls to the red team to ban away, and TSM can once again try to take the Akali out from Clutch's lineup. Well, and this is the thing, you know, why would Clutch change anything until TSM shows them that they have to, right? You know, TSM is the one that's having to adapt because everything Clutch is doing is working. They're the ones kind of dictating the pace of the series thus far. I'm very curious if Zyra Kong is locked in here or if they're happy to keep playing Saber because that champ has been successful mm -hmm. despite how much we know that other duo is very, very good. And it's just like the last game. They'd still rather have the Skarner, of course. You can pull a Kali out of a team fight pretty easily. He's been that good engaged. The Skarner game was great. Mm -hmm. Definitely was a strong front line as well as forcing multiple members of TSM to buy QSSs. A lot of the times that allowed other members of the team to blow up those opponents. Uh, and take them down to zero in these team fights. So a lot of effect being felt by that Skarner oh. pass. This was actually banned up by TSM in game one when TSM was on the blue side. They take it off and now very likely this will be going to Huni. It can be flexed to all three lanes that we have seen it recently in all three roles. So you have to give respect to that. It is a very powerful solo lane because of the range advantage and Rocket Jump allows you to play it offensively if you want as well. A Skarner plus Tristana can be set up to be very, very oppressive. There's your Zaya Rakan once again for TSM though. They go pretty much back to game one composition. Now I've been playing a lot of uh, Tristana top lately and one of the things that they're really you know, I had initially underestimated is the amount of damage you can have early game. With pressing attack and getting a lot of early levels in your explosive charge, your trades are very, very dominant. So it's not just that you have to push. It's not just that you can siege. You can win a lot of these all-ins that may surprise you. I will say that it is important with a Tristana and a Sivir locked in, double marksman for mm -hmm. clutch. They need some sort of AP threat so that TSM don't just now last round lock in some heavy tanks and build full armor. Yep. That would make it very difficult for a Tristana plus Sivir to actually win as the only carry. So you need uh, you know, some crowd control as well as some AP threat. And their answer for that in game one was the Karma. Right, and I do think Karma, you know, could fit in a draft like this once again. It was the GP instead of the Tristana, um, and and yes, GP, you know, does have a little bit of true damage slash magic damage with the ult. As sure, we corrected me on, but you know, this is mostly physical damage as game one was, and I do think that anytime you're running double marksman, Karma feels great to actually pair alongside those champions. Well, look at Clutch's uh, attempts right here. You're seeing Jarvan and Aurelia banned away, saying here are the ones that we think are scary. We'll ban the Jarvan. We're near going Sedge. Aurelia is the best Elaine alongside that. Don't play that one either. And there's the Karma ban. There's the magic damage that Clutch mm -hmm. Gaming played with a comp like this one last time, as TSM had also dropped down the Alistair. I'm partial to seeing Malphite. I would actually love to see Malphite in this game as, uh, as, a, as a top lane tank and a double physical damage, but we have to see what the rest of the draft does. I mean, this is so ridiculously similar to game one. You know, these are these are essentially the three same picks. The Tristana swapped out for the GP. Zyra Khan, as well as the Akali, was the same last time. Sejuani was the answer here last time for TSM, as well as Kled. Kled has not worked back-to-back -back games. I think they are going to change that up. But I would still not be surprised by another Sejuani pick, because J4 is banned out. Sejuani is still considered really, really strong. And it is a comfort pick for Spika. All right, with a Aatrox lock in here alongside Akali, they have to dive in. With those solo laners, Rakan for TSM has to get good engages this time around. And that's basically what has to change. These compositions are so similar to game number one. And that one going Clutch's favor. It was very nice. difficult for TSM. There's a Sejuani. Yep, locking that one yeah. in as well. Extremely close. They just have to execute better if they want this series to continue. Well, Nautilus, of course, very likely to be the support pick. I don't think we're seeing AP Nautilus mid by any means here in this draft. So we need that last pick to come through for Clutch Gaming. Probably wants to be magic damage. I think Aatrox and Sejuani can be big enough tanks to be incredibly threatening. So Azir will be that backline damage threat. Lots of magic damage here. And you have so much range damage. And, and look at the late game. Sivir, Tristana, and Azir as your three late game carries. That is absurd. Like That is almost, it feels like, unmatched. So, you know, I do think, again, TSM are in a similar position to game one, where they want to make things happen early game. You know, they do have a lot of playmaking to somewhat kind of make it a little bit more difficult to execute on the late game for Clutch. You know, Rakan can still be diving in there, but we did not see that be effective for Smoothie in game number one. And you're still going to have to pay that QSS tax with the Skarner in the game. Yeah, the last lock in there, the Azir for Clutch in the end, provides the two things we we're looking for. The AP threat for later, as well as some crowd control be hoody, by the way. Uh, to protect their backliners. 
So this this is actually a throwback to, to Broken Blade uh, playing Azir top. We may see them lane swap once more, though. It could actually be Demonte playing the Tristana top and Huni playing the Azir mid, but you know Faker has been playing a fair bit of this Tristana mid lane in his solo queue and his streams. He's kind of one of the guys who popularized it as well. Yeah, I'm expecting Huni to go mid with the Azir. Uh, top lane is a very scary place for Azir. Uh, easy to get ganked and a much squishier champion. Tristana has a couple more options for escapes with Rocket Jump and Buster. Shot. I think it's a, I think it's mid mid to Tristana because this He's is got ignite. ignite. He yeah. has ignite. He is actually looking for the kill here, and this is you know TP on Bjergsen. Ignite Tristana can Rocket Jump in on you if you do not have your shroud. You can get lit up. And Hoodie is very accustomed to playing mages in the top lane. He has played. Cassiopeia, very friendly. Bunch of things that do not have escapes, so he's fine fighting it out. Uh, we'll see if the junglers are attracted to that uh, teleport Azir in the top side. Uh, it's going to be an exciting one. We are into what could be the last game of the first quarter final. Clutch 2 0 over TSM, and with a win, punch their ticket further and further toward Worlds. They will at least be in the regional qualifier, and they can go even farther from there. And we can see if they can make this sweep happen. Vulcan's very first LCS playoffs, and he has been great so far. Two Nautilus games now for him. TSM backs against the wall. Yeah, and Clutch, you know, another bold draft. They really have been comfortable, you know, playing around some of these, these picks that are a bit more unique to them. The Kiana has not been too popular in the LCS thus far. Demonte has kind of made it his own, and now Ignite just on a mid. You no, know, really is powerful. You, you you think of Tristana as this hyperscaling champion, late game champion, just wants to farm it out. You can kill people. Like you can solo kill people with this very easily. The rocket jump slow is really relevant. If Bjergsen mispositions, if he's too far up, and Demonte knows where Spika is, you just jump on his head and you will win that all in. Calm before the storm this time around. As Demonte wants to have the early pressure on these minions, outing them right away. He wants to put Bjergsen under the turret. Keep in mind that outside of bot lane, early turrets have 50% uh, damage reduction, so super early plates aren't really that important. In the silence, you don't get them very easily. Uh, contrasted with all the bot lane Tristana lanes where you can get that plate super fast. And that is one thing that's going to color how they play laning phase out. Spika solos the blue buff for the most part. Lyra, uh, Raptors into red, and Bjergsen, yeah, but he's supposed to charge on. Three autos afterwards, good damage. And, and Demonte is actually running Demolish as well. This is something that some players have started to pick up, you know, in, in lieu of, you know, some of the more defensive resolve options. If you think that you're going to have the push, if you're against a weak wave clear champion, then you can actually get a lot of value out of that. And with these solo laners having the range advantage on the side of Clutch, you look towards the TSM jungler. Spika here, newly acquired onto the starting lineup for the, the LCS squad at least. He is the one with the Sejuani, he has the power to try and get these melee solo laners some threat in lane, some kills. And it feels like that is where a lot of this game will hinge on early. Bottom shots come through and the red buff goes over to Spika this time as he's got the same camps right now that Lyra's got as the bot laners keep trading back and forth. Temporary gold lead, CS lead to Sven. This is the same matchup we played in game one, of course, and it went TSM play early game. It was the solos that carried early for Clutch, and they eventually found first blood through Lyra. Slightly different lineups here this time around, and I want to see how much different it's going to be. Yeah. Wait and push in. Very interested to see, you know, because the thing is, yes, Huni doesn't really have any great escapes here on the Azir. You do have, have the slide out, but if, if Spika's not ever up there, then as Aatrox, you don't really have a lot of recourse in this matchup. You're going to get pushed in. You're going to be getting poked under the turret. Same thing really here for Kali until 6 even. So uh, I really want to see where Spika can get involved. And if he's not able to be involved, can these guys keep up and farm? You could already see a big CS lead in the top lane. And Broken Blade has already used his potion. And he's half health. So like that is a rough spot to be in. That's why I'm saying my eyes are completely on Spika. Because this is the way yeah. that Huni always plays these mages on the top side. Super offensively, goes for harassment early on, so he can try and push you off of those minions. He is pushed up at the turret. Meanwhile, it is gonna be a blue side exchange here as Spika goes to take away the blue that was not started by Lyra. Yeah, but as you talk about the aggression in the top lane, this is still a sort of game state that feels like it favors Clutch, where they can kind of track the jungle the whole time. Huni can feel safe the whole way through. Top Scuttle goes over to Lyra. There's not a lot of gank pass allowed. Spika, in fact, still on wards. Huni has complete uh, freedom to do whatever he wants. 
Yeah, and I mean, he's going to be able to actually save his TP if he wants. He will TP back into the lane in, in, in Huni fashion as he likes to really keep the pressure up. You know, has a more effective buy. Double Dorans gets the boots on top as well as the pink ward. So, you know, will have more control here for himself. And you can see, you know, Lyra having taken top scuttle, you know, playing around that side of the map is to enable Huni to non-stop shove it in his opponent and keep up, you know, this lane dominance. All right, well, the resets come through. Yeah, Double Dorans, I think this is going to be some... Uh, dominance coming out of this one. 300 gold lead, 400 gold lead, roughly around there for Clutch so far from their laning phases. Botlane still going Sven's way. Uh, I do want to point out, Kodison actually is the uh, CSD record holder across LCS bot laners. Uh, but it's been pretty good for his Venice Smoothie so far in the early game. Now Vulcan rooted, ignited. He's going to go down a straight up two on two first blood. What a laning phase for TSM. Yeah, it's the TSM bottom lane that step up in their time of need. Rakan and Zaya. We always talk about the early threat of those all ins. No hesitation there from Smoothie as he goes in, throws down the Ignite. Sven gets the root on the uh, collar right there. And that is going to finish up the kill. Smoothie sticks around to finish up that turret play, too. And then yeah. E into recall. It's a really good play. Yeah, that is absolutely huge for TSM. Even just morale wise, getting a big kill like that in the 2v2 is going to feel so damn good. Smoothie was on a ward here, you know, but they are able to find the engage straight in onto Vulcan. Vulcan could not buffer his Q in time to actually get out of there. The Q comes down, but much too late, and he just gets shredded there. Yeah. Maybe a nice early start for TSM on that bottom side. Really nicely done right there. I don't know if Abstract was on or not, but never no. had the chance to auto to turn it back around. Uh, never went for the CC to trigger it if it was available from cooldown. As uh, Skarner Spire gets taken back over, Clutch Gaming gets some vision out of the bottom river. But now you've got a nice gold lead for TSM. The farm lead, the BF sword, plus the extra little bit of extra, extra stuff on Sven is going to be a good start for them. See if they can snowball off of it. Once again, both junglers are on the bottom side. And I want to turn your attention towards the minimap. If you see up there, Huni is zoning Broken Blade off of those minions. Both junglers are down here fighting over Scuttle Crab and Ward and Vision, but Broken Blade can't even approach the minion line as Huni on the Comet Azir is pushing him back. Vulcan goes in for that control <laughs> ward and he gets it. They've got the squad. The Scuttle goes over as well. Look at the Vision control. Look how much Clutch Gaming can see. It's the whole river. <laughs> And a lot of that top lane really is going to be decided by <laughs> how much of the farm can Broken Blade collect. Because thankfully for him, the wave is at least pushing towards him. Uh, so he will have an opportunity to get some of that farm. But, you know, Huni is then going to try to really punish him here now that he has no teleport available to try to send him back on a bad recall. And once again, they have vision on Spica, so they know Huni can just continue to bully the Aatrox under the tower right now. He's trying to harass him away. Lyra, though, lying in wait with the Skarner for a possible... Oh. Gank with oh. Predator. That anchor might have been the kill straight up yeah. there. Lyra has ult afterwards. That was probably going to be a shutdown, but just barely jukes to the side. Smoothie stays up. Yeah, that was really big there for him, Smoothie, avoiding that hook. As, yeah, I think you're right. I think that is a straight up kill. You hit that hook, you're going to hit the root. Lyra's going to get his ult guaranteed, and you would be toast. Thankfully, walking away. Just bread so far for a Smoothie. <laughs> That's the conversion. You can't go back, by the way. Once I, you're toast, you can't become <laughs> bread again. So Also, you can't become toast if you're not already bread. So you have to start there. That's fair. Meanwhile, top side, actually. Mooney, as we saw on the minimap, after he pushed a, uh, up Broken Blade, went for the invade deep into the jungle. So he got vision on all of these camps. Uh, Clutch Gaming now, with this information, they know all three of these, uh, Wolf, Gromp, and Blue, have, have respawn. So they can predict that this is going to be the next 30 seconds of Spica's time and try and crack said Wadi that way. And I want to see Lyra get up here because this is a wave that Broken Blade has to push in. So Huni has Broken Blade in a really dangerous spot, um, but the jungler not here quite yet to, to capitalize on it. So the freeze will be broken. You know, if, if he had actually just skipped uh, doing, doing the Raptors there and went straight top, I think there is an opportunity to actually aggressively hold that wave and make it so Broken Blade has to commit to pushing in, and then you can possibly get a kill. And look at this. This positioning right now is because of what I talked about earlier. Clutch already gathered the information that Spica is top half of the map. So Lyra is waiting around for a counter gank here. This is not them you know, thinking that Aatrox is going to pull something by himself. He is waiting for TSM to try and make that offensive play, knowing that Spica had just finished there. Nothing comes of it, but that's what the hesitation, that's what these recalls up on the top half of the map mean. And that is, you kind of paid for by not doing Krugs. Well, 
Broken Blade walks back. You gotta get a little bit of credit to Broken Blade though, because you know they didn't actually capitalize on the fact that the wave was pushing against him. They weren't able to really punish him in that spot. You know he has he has kept pretty even in in farm here. And oh my God, Cody says KDA <laughs> as Sivir, 65. Decent. Not bad. Decent. Playoff KDA currently higher than Medios is all time. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Right now, though, still 300 gold puts TSM ahead. They got that first blood down there. Don't want to sell them short. The reverse sweep has happened before. They did against Cloud9 just last split in the semifinals. And before they nearly took down Team Liquid. Now they got the bot lane pressure yet again. Second plate likely to be theirs. Smoothie. Here we go Paper again. Reverse on. Anchor. They're going to find some knockups. Runs back to the squad. And Lyra not going to flash for the ult there. Now. Yeah, TSM continuing to try and push heavily on the bottom part of the map. This is what is getting them. Uh, the majority of their gold right now. Some of those uh, turret plates, as well as the kill that was earned by Sven and oh, Smoothie. In trouble. That's a stun. Not going to go for the ult, not going to pull him wow. in. I feel like you could, with, with Impale and Buster Shop, put him towards that turret. So they did have some early info on the bottom lane rotating. If you're looking at the mini-map there, uh, yeah. TSM's bottom lane was pushed in, and they made the call that there was going to be support coming from the river. It was a long ways away, yeah. but that is my assumption as to why they yeah. called off that play. TSM uh, have them push under the turret on bottom side, so they were worried about extra people joining the skirmish. Yeah, I definitely think you're right, but, but still kind of agree with Freak that, you know, if you Skarner ult there into potential Walk away from the shot, explosion! You know, you <laughs> have Ignite as well. Like, there's a lot of kill potential there. This is, you know, pretty squishy Akali, but, sure. you know, they're, they're taking a uh, safer approach, certainly, and, and Zero obviously wants to make certain that he is going to get a kill with that first ultimate, so we'll hold on to it. Still chunking down right here. Nice Drake pick up there. TSM getting their Drake into this game. Cloud Drake is booming speed, and that's not too bad. Uh, Clutch Gaming, though, able to actually tie the gold back up with the mid pressure. Two plates taken by Damante. Explosive charge and demolish. Very good at that. Earn some money. And look at this, though. The bottom lane just under fire. So much pressure down here for TSM, and it's working. And now on the top side, Huni, forced ult to push back Broken Blade, does so. Yeah, that's actually a really good job there by Broken Blade because he still has his ultimate. So now you have that ult advantage for a potential 1v1 fight. But Lyra, as he has now third straight game, gets the early Herald, will drop it. And they have Demolish, mind you, again, on this Tristana. Yeah. So that is just gone. And again and again and again, Clutch Gaming first turret of the game every single time using the Rift Herald to do so, I believe. And that is gold in the pockets. First turret itself, only 150. It's not massive, but just tells you that well, they're also getting five to eight plates every game as well. And uh, the early lane pressure has been paying off. Yeah, the Akali pick, uh, once again for TSM, opens up a possible lane where they get pushed in early on. We'll see if it pays off later. Spiritson now recalling. Maybe he has enough to upgrade uh, to the full gunblade, does get that. So that is definitely a power spike. You know, uh, the flow is super nice, adds to your burst damage as well. Doesn't have boots for the move speed yet, but maybe he can find an all-in on one of these targets before they start grouping up. Because the game plan moving forward for Clutch should be very similar to what we've already seen from them in this series. And that would make it much more difficult for Bjergsen to find those first kills. And I'm going to be interested to see where he actually elects to try to go and find those. Because I do think, at least in the 1v1, it's very unlikely to get one on Demonte. He has so much self-heal with the Buster Shot, you know, as well as that rocket jump. Um, but, you know, if he can actually combine up with some people, they could make something happen. Jason, move around. Second plate drops him in the top lane as the bot lane turret was already taken out by the TSM duo. So it's still Zven and Smoothie doing most of the work here for TSM. Look at the lane, feeling the punishment right now, but there's a stun on the front line. The rest of the squad is there. The charm, the knock of the kill. Lyra goes down. Two to zero, TSM. I have your answer, Azel. It is right in the mid lane. <laughs> they target the jungler. Uh, yeah, I should have known. Lyra just kind of wandering up there and gets burst down. A nice combo there from TSM, just locking him up using Spika, Smoothie flashing in as well. No chance to get away. Beautiful stuff. You can see the spells come out of the top lane. They're going to be all right. Yeah, as a jungler, uh, and especially tank jugglers like Skarner, uh, you're used to being frontline. You're used to being super tanky. But itemizing into armor here, uh, he doesn't have any early magic resist and just a little bit of extra health. So Bjergsen and TSM recognize that that is their easiest target as junglers are low levels. So they have a little bit lower health from being lower levels uh, compared to solo laners. That affords them their first kill. Here's another look at how it started. As you can see, it is a control ward. And Clutch are looking to make the plays as he's thinking 
He feels very confident with his Predator moving up to help with the cannon, but Bjergsen takes the opportunity. He's got the stun and smoothly from the outside on the Rakan. Uses Flash, uses Ultimate, uses everything mm -hmm. to chain the CC so that Lyra can't even flash out. That was Sejuani's stun into Rakan uh, combination there. And that's enough to finish it. And they never had vision of Smoothie until he was already there. So, you know, nice roam from him, utilizing the Moby Boots, getting up and, and being the extra CC they needed for the kill. You said that the Rakan had to be the difference between games one and three here for TSM. Already, Smoothie has gotten off two engages, one in the bottom lane, one in the mid lane. We'll see if it's enough to keep TSM afloat, though, because the game is still very close. Yes. And Clutch have very good grouping options. They do. And I want to point out DeMonte specifically as that. He's the one who's been part of pretty much all of the turret plates here. He's got the most individual gold of the game, even more than Sven, who got a uh, turret to his own name. So this is really, I feel like, a lot about DeMonte on this. Trist, what's going to happen in the mid game? Right? That Ruin King has already done 6,500 gold is the most on the map. So it's the player who has to be the one who steps up. Yeah, and I'm really interested to see what his, his zeal item will actually be if he goes for something a little bit more defensive, like the PD second. You know, because there is a fair bit of dive here with the Akali as well as his Aatrox, or if he's going to try to maximize damage a little bit more, you know, with the Shiv or Rapid Fire, which is so popular in pro play. And right now we're seeing a lopsided map. TSM send multiple members up to the top side to get that turret, and Clutch answer with a mid push and a bottom push. Puni on the Azir, you can see at the turret and bottom side, is trying to get that objective back. Kissem got the turret on the top side, and this will be the payment for Clutch. Yeah, Clutch, you know, they're able to get some damage on mid turret. They're going to take the bot turret, and they're set up for this dragon. So this is going to be a potential fight here. Dragon spawning now. Bjergsen is roaming out there. He's running straight from base. Just got the Oblivion Orb, so is going to be very, very strong for this fight. First big team fight of the game, the one that TSM needs to win down 0-2 in this series. They grab the Skarner Spire as well, making Lyra's life harder. Bjergsen waiting in the wings, there's the first stun, there's the hard engage, and the shotgun and a bulk at the very start. The re-engage looks towards Lyra, hello. Hooney. That's low HP, Hooney on the wing, Demonte on the sides as well, and Hooney's gonna push back Bjergsen, but now Broken Blade, has to from the rest of the squad, still slowed down, trying to run out, but only at 1,000 HP, does make his way out of this one. Bjergsen oh. burning the rest of the ultimate. But now Demonte wants into this one. The Shroud push the back into the squad, and that's oh. the alley-oop they needed. Oh. What a pickup. Demonte sees Bjergsen use the second half of the ultimate on Akali, knows the execute won't be there, and Rocket jumps in for the Tristana sec into the rack of the team, allowing them to get the dragon as well. And that was some clean CC because Lyra actually immediately ulted him. Bjergsen had the shuriken on Demonte, so he could have actually shuriken flipped back to him. Uh, and we'll watch this one more time. You know, this is the beginning of that fight. Again, seeing that they are around there, that they had walked into that brush, they can look for the engage. And that control ward is what Demonte sat on later in the fight as well. Okay, TSM, big engage. Sejuani ultimate into Rakan ultimate. Ooh, they get the kill they need. Demonte on the side and Huni on the other side of that wall. Chunk down Sven, force out the ultimate. So TSM have to retreat after this. They know they don't have anything left in the tank. Then Bjergsen here, because of that control, he doesn't know Demonte's in there, uses his ultimate. So look at that, shuriken flip right there. If he had a split second, he could have gotten out, but he did not get it. I think he kills Demonte if he doesn't get instantly Skarner ulted. Well, you have to have a good pass there from Demonte. Ultimate right over to the Skarner. <laughs> And Lyra catches them. Nicely played. So look at this game state right now. 700 gold puts, cl puts Clutch Gaming ahead with an equal turret score and even the same Drakes in this game right now. So this is a mid game that is Clutch uh, favored. Flavored probably as well. Probably tastes like victory based on the series going. And what does victory taste like, Freak? From a uh, fellow who has experienced it before? Well, um, their, their jerseys are yellow and black, so I'm going with banana and licorice. Okay, that That's sounds a like a terrible combo. combination. <laughs> I don't know if I want to win anymore. <laughs> I think you've just ruined victory right, for me, Freak. Banana and Blackberry? Okay. Oh, oh, oh. No. oh, Rocket Jump gets that way. Nice bust out as well. Good save by Demonte. And a stun prevents the re-engage, but Lyra maybe not stopped right now. Doom he doom. wants to smite in. He's still running forward. Slowed down by Spika. Just cannot find the ultimate. Just barely pushed away. Look at that good kiting from TSM. All the slows, all the projectiles coming out yeah. to try and fend off the Skarner. They do avoid a counter attack there from Clutch. Two teleports used in the attempt. Yeah, and that, that's pretty big to get those teleports out. 
and we can see it was the PD second here for DeMonte. So I, I think this is actually a pretty smart choice. There's such a huge amount of damage that is going to be in this composition. You have Sivir, you have Azir, you have Trasana. You don't need to maximize every character's individual damage output. I think you just need to be safe enough that you can contribute something to the fight. And I think the PD is going to help you do that. Yeah, I think it makes sense. The risk reverse option is totally fine when you have a million damage sources and maximizing just DPS isn't really needed. And it's still this 1,000, well, 500 gold lead to Clutch, still sitting at the same mid game. Baron spawning in 20 seconds, this time probably not rushed down by Clutch when it comes up. Seems less likely this time around. Yeah, this is really the stage of the game where you have to track the enemy vision. This is critical. If you find one of these picks, we have seen back to back TSM making Sejuani and Rakan picks, but also Clutch have the options there with the Skarner and with the Nautilus. Whoever gets one of these spread out members gets the Glatz and get one of those very high priority objectives. So one of the things I want to actually talk about a little bit here is, is something that's kind of notably absent. No QSSs have actually been purchased up by TSM, whereas we saw QSS rush from Suthi last time uh -oh. and a QSS rush from Bjergsen as Old back, Just broken engaged. blade, pull back in, but without burning flash, you can't get back into that. So TSM has clearly, you know, had the discussion and made the call that, hey, you can't actually afford to go for the QSS that early on because you're giving up too much damage potential. It's too much itemizing towards Justice Smoothie. Smart. This time was ready around. Speaking of coming to the center, but here comes Winnie back line. Finds a bit of a charm, but pulled back in. And they don't have the damage. He jumps back to safety. But Ignite is enough. And they get the kill anyway. Now Lyra in the mix, right against Broken Blade, who's trying to run away. They got Bjergsen for safety, and they are going to stay alive. But still, that Demonte's one kill. Demonte's pushing too. That was a 5v4. They get killed. Demonte will take a tower. Yeah, that was a crazy outplay right there. Lyra audits, and they did not two. 4v4. Trying to find the stun. Vulcan's low. One more shot, jumping in, Bjergsen finds a sick play, takes down one kill. Finds the angle there during that time. Demonte does get the tower on Tristana. TSM trying to get out with their lives now. I think there was actually two towers. I think that the tier one was still alive there. Yeah, was killed for it was, for it oh, my mistake. So that was just the one tower then, but still, you know, one for one in kills, and you do actually take that tower here. So let's see this one more time. TSM setting up for the engage. Smoothie looking for the wraparound. The spell shield is there, and the Skarner ultimate was buffered, so it immediately went off once he was in range, and Smoothie just gets trailed by the towers. Yeah, the teleport channeling there for TSM. After that, Broken Blade does get the knockup, gets out on the Aatrox, and TSM try and reset. Then they look for this kill. Look at Bjergsen trying to get this angle. Then goes up, gets a minion wave down, Spika hits the ultimate, stunning up Nautilus for just long enough for Bjergsen to get that angle. Able to land the Shuriken on Lyra, <laughs> then uses the Shuriken on Lyra to get to position to ult across and finds the kill flashing out. In the meantime, though, Clutch have reset and are picking up another dragon. Yeah, that was really clean from Bjergsen. And you can actually activate your ultimate at any point during the Shuriken flips. You don't have to fully connect with it. Uh, makes for those super smooth plays. Yeah. And look at that gold graph back into the red, back towards Clutch's favor here as the mid game looks solid. Demonte once seeing that the dive no longer was successful for TSM said, okay, I'll go back in the lane, I'll knock the turret down. And then what's funny is TSM then saw, ah, Demonte staying top lane. I guess we'll try for round two. And that one at least was successful. So that was a one for one in kills. But as we saw, that turret kill, definitely useful. Gold lead for Demonte, still very large. 9,800 individual gold on him. They're circling in. Oh, that's a pull on the speak. It pushed him back now with the zero as well. And more crowd control on the stopwatch. Buys a few seconds, but no ult, no flash, no way out, and Hoonie claims that kill. Could it be Baron again? Third straight game <laughs> just past 20 minutes. No, they're going to go mid lane, uh, try to look for some more guaranteed goal instead, not willing to risk it, but maybe they, they changed their mind. You know, They are heading back to this area and uh -oh. trying to corral Smoothie, who is no, he's very here. far away. But it's going to be right to falling Baron. off, and here's the engage. No jungler alive, so it's not a spike fight. It's a 4v5. TSM desperately needs to go their way. A knockup onto Hooney. He's going to put this thing forward. There's the ult. They found the suppression. There's a lot of space built by Smoothie. And it's a one for one so far, too. It's going to be a trade. Now it's a four, sorry, three versus two on the fight. Demonte cutting away. Broken Blade gets the healing. The re engage. Sven pops off for the Quadra. Will it be all five? Is Demonte oh, running? And a pentakill redemption for Sven. Pentakill by. And TSM come up huge. The Baron is going to be there soon. It's just in time. Spika has revived from the earlier kill. And TSM turn the table. That was a series saving play. TSM 
you had to feel if they lost the fight there, if they lost the Baron for the third straight game, it would have been backbreaking. But they come up enormous in the 4v5. And the penta kill here from Sven. Check it out in the Pro View replay. All right, he clears out the ward first. They know they have to go for it. Slear flashes in. Then you can see Sven right here. Gets off a pretty big blade car there, getting the first kill. Demonte went to the back, but Sven fights him off. That means that Clutch are split, and they take the flash in. He's able to get it. Broken Blade goes back in to lock down Demonte. Gets the knock up there. And like a good teammate, yeah. save the kill for the full Penta. That's now six kills on the Zaya. QSS has been picked up. With all that <laughs> money he just earned, he also decided to pay off his taxes. Uh, yeah, you get it all at that point. Cody Sun, first death in seven games, finally does fall. TSM looking to dive. Oh, damage on the Lyra. The knock of this there. This is the kind of dive TSM wanted. And the road to the reverse sweep is certainly paved with gold now, as they've now got 10 to 5 in kills, a million items on the Sven. Mid lane 2 2 gonna drop, and now in the driver's seat, TSM needed to push forward. Uh, we'll see if Clutch can delay. We have to remember they have very, very good wave clear. Tristana, Sivir, and Azir. That is incredible amount of stalling power. So, you know, it is gonna have to be on the back of dives like that that TSM really takes objectives. It's hard, I think, to just straight up siege into Clutch. Uh, let's see if uh, TSM still two minutes left on the Baron. If they can get another one of these outer turrets, right out there, up to two and a half thousand uh, gold power play. You can see already Broken Blade is pushing down bottom, and Bjergsen's trying to get top pushing for them. With that teleport on Broken Blade, get them to try and get one more of the secondary turrets to get the most out of their buff. This game's been about the TSM bottom line. Look at the kill participation. Nine for both of those players. First Blood was there as the team fights coming down to Zven right now. Broken Blade and Bjergsen on split push duty, pushing in the waves. The five on fives have been Zaya with three items in the QSS, feeling comfortable. And while Zaya certainly is the strongest player in the game, Demonte's damage must also be respected. Infinity Edge has now been completed. So Justana sitting on those three items. Huni is on two. Cody Sun sitting on two and a half. So there is an incredible amount of power still in this Clutch squad, despite the fact that TSM is now ahead and feeling a lot more comfortable. They also have to be careful about the fact that they don't have a lot of QSSs still. So that can get turned around. Clearer does not die instantly and actually gets an ult off on a Bjergsen or even Broken Blade, you can get focused down. 47 seconds left on Baron, and TSM still going. They made effective use of their 1-3-1. I think it's a little dangerous to try and get inside of these inhibitor turrets, but they're still pressing ahead. Bjergsen has teleport on Akali. Ooh. Nearly catches Fika there. Should've pulled him back to the base gate and gotten some more done, but no kill picked up. Righteous Glory though down. Predator the same. Akali is up to the tower right here. Bjergsen keeps going. He's got teleport ready, could join the rest of the team. But the Baron buff about to run out might put a stop to their seed. All right, again, some this focus on that. Here comes the engage, a big stun, the knockup. They were to knock down Hootie. And another kill coming across as Lero drops as well. TSM may have just found the dive they needed. That was a huge ult from Spika. Hootie was going in for the stream, a shuffle, but got stuffed by the Sejuani. And they're looking to end it. 5v3, even with Baron buff, Aqua oh, might have the play, but yeah, look at that. Silver wave clear, Rosanna wave clear. Looking pretty good, they go to the mid lane instead. This time they have the wave, and they might just knock down the turret. Demolish helps with that one. And indeed, you can see Clutch Gaming willing to pull a little bit farther back and maybe live to fight another day. TSM though so far ahead, they are absolutely poised to win this one. This is all off the back of that pentakill for Sven in the river, resulting in the Baron, resulting in such an enormous gold influx for TSM. Huge, huge turnaround for them, perhaps for the entire series. And the craziest thing about this game is that basically the entire gold lead is actually just Sven. He's up like 5,000 gold. Now let's watch this one more time. So this is Huni looking for the stream of shuffle. He goes forward though and gets nailed by that Sejuani ultimate. Didn't have the timing. Goes down immediately. Lyra was going forward, trying to back him up, and he gets a race as well. Yeah, one of the biggest differences in this game compared to the others of the series has been the initiation gold. of four TSM by Smoothie and Spika. All right. Well, the next team fight bound to happen. It's a lot of defensive wave clear for Clutch right now, but those inhibitors are going to be dead by the time Baron respawns. So it's pretty free map control. 
for TSM. Clutch have to kind of come out in large groups to knock down these minions. And they retreat back as the waves push back in automatically. In just a minute, Baron spawns, and Clutch has to find some kind of way in. Lyra will have Flash, most likely. Ultimate's all available. In fact, every single Flash is up for the Clutch Gaming side. TSM going to have them too by the time it spawns. We have to see now how Clutch is actually going to try to navigate this. You know, two inhibitors down. They have no one in the bottom lane right now. Broken Blade is pushing, so I feel like they're looking okay. for a hard engage, and that is going to be their attempt. Well, the Zero Tour comes up to buy some space. Baron in 30 seconds, but the waves are pushing in, which means it's time for Buhuni to be the one to recall. One of the two TP uses on the squad. Magic damage is good against Super Minions. Midling going to be cleared again, so at least mid won't yet be the pressure point. Broken Blade could be flanking here, though. They know Huni went back to base, and he is trying to get around behind the team, but is spotted. Zivrolt makes for good movement around the map. Huni cleared top, has to go right back into the bottom lane. Is giant wave on the Nexus turrets right now. Yeah, double super minions are going to wear away at the Clutch Gaming Nexus turret. TSM have time on their side. Huni rotates over to try and clear them out now. And those are going to drop, but TSM have vision control. They're actually even starting the Baron right now, and this is darkness right now. It's like Nocturne all the time. A single trinket is used. They know TSM started this one. They know, though, that it's not all five. They have to respect the rest Lyra of the squad. Lyra does have flash. And again, looking for the play. Lyra runs forward. 4,000 health on the Baron. Doesn't get stunned. This could be the re-engagement. Lyra smoothie. smoothie. Over the wings. Looks for the play. Finds a massive charm. Pulled back in, and Sven is already legendary. They will trade one for one, but the kills might be more important. Who needs buys in space? Clutch trying to run away. But look out for the kills. Here's the back line. Pops the stop oh! one. Big root for Sven. And Lyra's got to be next. This is the fight. Only one shutdown comes through, but the Monte is gone as well. And that's all she wrote. The ace and TSM push right into the base. TSM will not be denied. Bjergsen and Sven both with big flash ultimates in there to finish off those extra kills. And we're going to get some more games. We are going to get some more games. This one's absolutely going to TSM. No chance for Clutch to defend this one. The turrets will fall, and our series will go to game four. TSM to start the reverse sweep. Vulcan to try his hardest, and he just cannot do enough. The next is open. Broken Blade will deal the damage. Bjerg's going to help out as well with the KDA. And 18 to 8, we're going to game four. Such an important game for TSM here. On the precipice of defeat, looking like they were going to lose around that Farron again. They come up with the enormous 4v5, the pentakill for Sven to save the series. Yeah. And that team fight broke down into Sven and Broken Blade versus three members of Clutch on different sides. And because Sven can fight off Demonte to one side, they then mm -hmm. turn with the flash and barely are able to get it. That determines the whole rest of the game. And that's the reason we're still going with our series. It's a very exciting one right now. Good to see uh, the, the redemption arc for Sven, I would say. I feel like, of course, the everyone remembers game five of the finals from the spring split where individual misplays were really hurting him. And then we even saw the end of the summer split here where it still felt like Sven was the one not holding up his end of the bargain, getting caught out, making silly plays. This time he finally gets the step up. They get the two-on-two -two kill in lane. Credit to him and Smoothie there. And then his team fighting was great. Yeah, died at the very, very end, but that was part of the all-in that closed it. And it was so interesting to see that they moved away from the QSSs. Bjergsen never bought one that game. Smoothie didn't buy one either. They actually felt like, hey, that was wasted gold. We don't need this. We can play around this Garner, and they were able to do so effectively. They are absolutely right about that one. So TSM have struck back in the series, and the State Farm Analyst Desk is ready to break down how. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Best look yet for TSM as they pick up their first victory of the series to push the score line to two and one. I want to talk about how they did it, though, because once again, from Clutch, we had a very interesting look with both the Azir and the Tristana. Importantly, though, the one major adjustment made between Game 1's Champion Select and Game 3's Champion Select is GP hit the ban table, so it was no longer an option to be flexed against Bjergsen's account. I think Amazing's point as well about not wanting to see the Kled. We ah, have to see we'll the yeah. Aatrox in the top lane. Actually, a pretty good team fighter. <laughs> 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 yeah, I would say so. We'll see that, uh, that yeah. pick team fight a little later on. Another thing, they banned Karma in the second rotation, yeah. so they couldn't have the answer that they used in the first game. So TSM did make a number of small adjustments, even though they basically ran the same comp back with the, the one change in the top lane. Like, 
that was a pretty substantial change as well as the ban. So better draft all around, but they still had two losing lane matchups in solo lanes. So it wasn't like Clutch didn't get a good draft either. Right, Clutch so actually, winning. I was gonna yeah. say, so help me actually, Amazing, help me understand uh, upon loading into the game, what winning looks like for each of these teams at say the 15, 20 minute mark. Like what should the game state be for TSM to consider themselves winning or for Clutch? I mean, there's, you can make multiple points. Like for TSM, it's obviously obviously their bottom lane. The Zyra or Khan tries to hard engage on the any bot lane, especially on the level six area. We just want to make plays on the bottom lane, get a couple of plates, and then maybe even swap to the Herald, take it that. So that's basically TSM smooth condition because they're going to lose both souls, they're going to get pushed in the whole game, and there's nothing they can do unless they heavily gank that. Okay. On CG side, you have two pushing soul lanes. You will get plates on the top side. You'll probably get Herald control if unless the enemy bot lane snowboards enough. And I think we kind of saw what was happening there. It was actually basically what, what was to be expected. It's just that the soul lanes of CG actually got more than the dual lane of TSM. Yeah, by all accounts, right, we're looking at the early phase for uh, Clutch Gaming and saying, okay, yes, a few of those kills went in favor of TSM because they were able to force plays. But turret plate gold was going well in favor of Clutch, and that Tristana was building a substantial individual advantage. Yeah, I mean, the Triss was it, doing Triss things, right? That's what Tristan is meant to do here. And the Buster Shot is actually a pretty creative idea as to getting Bjergsen out of the fight. But those plates did amount to a big lead that I think Clutch Gaming felt like they were in the driver's seat. And it was only through their own kind of botchiness that the fight and game got away from them. Well, then let's take a look at the game-defining moment. Yes. Because it is Clutch in the driver's seat opting to go for a Baron call. It's TSM's response that will ultimately net them a pentakill for this man on your screen here. This all starts with a pick on the jungler. So Clutch Gaming feels really confident going for this, but then they go for this engage and notice that Huni and Cody Sun were not immediately there to burst down the, uh, the Akali. And so Broken Blade and Sven have a complete field day in cleaning up the house after. Yeah, I mean, that was that was the big thing. The Aatrox and Zaya being able to get a lot of damage down, they're also the last two people alive to clean up the entire fight, so they did a really good job in that. Um, and I would say, like, that's not the greatest look for how you win a series. Like, you can't repeat that situation where the enemy team messes up a 4v5. So right. I think TSM should not feel, like, great about this game, but I did like that they were at least still proactive over the course I mean, of the game. they should feel awesome. They have, they look terrible in the first two. This is like, oh my I God, mean, we can do it. I feel good because you won, but it's like, we got a long road ahead. We were down again in this game, but they were still confident, at least in their playmaking. They forced plays around bot lane. They forced plays around mid lane. They didn't all work out, but they were not just like heads low waiting for the enemy team to throw or kill them. I mean, let me insert you into this position, all right? You are on TSM right now, uh, and oh, you not just, you, right? Not again. <laughs> 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 yes, that's what I wanted. <laughs> okay, uh, but you know, this is this is the way you find your way back into the series with a win here in game three. What What is the conversation like for you then backstage though about the victory? How good you feel about it? And again, you know, uh, uh, how much of it was gifted to you perhaps? I mean, I don't think you really realize how much was gifted to you in the moment because you just see your own mechanical play. So I think especially conference players such as Broken Blade, such as Ven, who are building like building themselves up, now, I'm actually going to feel a lot better coming to game four, simply because they got those all plays coming in. So I think the conversation is going to be, yeah, we actually won a game. We can win. They're not as good as, as, as we made them out to be. And I think that's basically the main point of the conversation. Now. And I think you, that, can, that you can actually see Reggie saying that right now, if you read lips. <laughs> <There> yeah. <you> <laughs> Again, crumbs. Uh, I'm not so sure about that one. Um, Clutch will return to blue side as it's game four, and they have side selection. Uh, they've won one on red, one on blue. I'm coming back over to you, Mark, though, uh, to remaining on the TSM point, uh, because we just talked about this proactivity in the game and that, hey, that's a good thing to see. Uh, from red side, are they still able to grab similar tools? Or are they still able to find the same exact things they want to be proactive and ultimately push us to a fifth and final game? I bet they'll find Sejuani again. Yeah. <laughs> Fourth time's a charm. I you think, think so? I think they'll get it again. I mean, would that not be a consideration for Clutch to just say, hey, let's remove one of these? very easy yeah. go button I, I think it should be actually because Spika is clearly getting a lot more confident with the Sejuani as the game progresses. They did have a little bit of vision to give them a hint, but you still have to be pretty bold to make yeah. a, a throw your ultimate in blind to make a play, especially when it's your match point game. He was throwing a lot of max range ones too. Like that one was basically max range. This one's pretty slick here. Yeah, not quite as, as far. Actually, it is pretty far away too when he ends up throwing it. No flash away. 
But I mean, I think these are the kinds of things where Speak is slowly getting his groove on the champion compared to game one, where we were relatively critical of a number of missed ultimates that could have swayed fights. Like, you're in the right place at the right time, right. set up, you missed it, now it doesn't work. He won a number of fights and found some pickoffs for them. So maybe it is worth taking away just to disrupt the rookie's groove. That's what I was gonna yeah. say. I just yeah. wonder because so much of the conversation at the top of the day was this guy, this is that questionable substitution move that TSM is making going into a postseason. Uh, to some degree, should you not, you know, entertain taking him off of the only pick he's played so far? Yeah, I think you should. I think you should maybe take away the Sona out of Ben's like just honestly put the Sejani in there. Or, and that's one of the issues that like CG has, is that they cannot actually play Sejani. Like the whole split they have shown that they're actually not prioritizing it. So either they ban it or they try to deal with it again. And I think right now at this point in time, like the Grookey has played three games. He's confident now. Get him out of there. Is there much concern for the side of Clutch Gaming having dropped that game? I'm a, I'm a little concerned, okay. yeah. I mean, you I, did predict my, so, a 3-1, yeah, so, so we're on track for that. My concern is not so much in Clutch's ability, but rather how much confidence did TSM gain out of that one? Just okay. because so you, on you have some side. serious leaders on that team that can turn things around. They have done it before, and so I'm just, I just wonder if the spark that this game provided for them is enough to just take the game all together. Well, having won the first two games, uh, Clutch bought themselves a lot of breathing room here, now having two more opportunities to close the series out. TSM, though, they've kept their semifinal dreams alive. We'll see if they can do it again when we return for game four. Don't touch that browser.